Back when the internet was young and facts still had meaning, there was the History Channel, featuring shows about, you guessed it, history. But that version of the network is long gone today. Here are the biggest scandals to hit the reality TV outlet that's now simply called History. Ice Road Truckers is one of history's best-known reality shows, depicting the perilous lives of drivers in the iciest regions of Canada and Alaska. And sure, it's been criticized by actual trucker media like Truck News for exaggerating or even faking some of the danger. Man, it is cracking. It's something fierce. I can't go any slower. Oh my gosh! But real scandal hit the show in 2013. According to a CBS report, star Tim Zicker abducted Lisa Kudeau after hiring her for escort work in Las Vegas. He claimed she overcharged him by $1,000 and demanded she meet him to settle the dispute. It was then that he dragged her back to his apartment, beat her, and tied her up in a closet. Fearing for her life, Cadeau gave Zicker the phone number of an undercover police officer, claiming he could pay her ransom. Zicker called the number and unknowingly arranged his own arrest. The Las Vegas Sun reported Zicker confessed on the spot that he intended to hold Cadeau hostage and prostitute her through Craigslist. Every so often, even the History Channel has to admit that some of their programming is a tad controversial, like the time they commissioned and then abruptly canceled a $30 million miniseries about the Kennedys. The Hollywood Reporter explained that an early leaked draft of the script caused an outcry among Kennedy family allies, and after months of rewrites and filming, the high-profile project was pulled entirely for being pretty much wall-to-wall -wall slander and lies. They made it sound like I like Hitler said I was anti-American. Me! Co-creator Joel Cerno defended his project via The Atlantic, claiming people were biased against him for being a staunch conservative making a series about the Kennedys. Conspiracy theorists also took the opportunity to insist that the surviving members of the Kennedy family had bullied the History Channel into dropping the show. But when the miniseries eventually did come out elsewhere, The Hollywood Reporter called it, quote, dull, unwatchable, and a ham-fisted mess. Swamp People follows the lives of alligator hunters living in Louisiana, but alligators actually seem to be the least of the cast's worries. According to TMZ, Swamp People stars R.J. Molinaire and J. Paul Molinaire were arrested for attacking a man with a beer bottle. TMZ also reported that Trapper Joe was arrested for burning his girlfriend with a lit cigarette and then punching her in the chest. And Screen Rant detailed a time that Roger Rivers Jr. got in trouble with the law for selling illegal meat. We like it all. We eat everything down here. <laughs> the swamp people of the show proved so troublesome, Starcasm reports that most of the cast was suddenly fired before season 7 of the show, shocking fans and sending angry cast members into social media rants. Producers held firm, though, and remaining fans just had to deal with a whole new bunch of swamp people. Bigfoot Captured was a feature-length special about the discovery and capture of a real Sasquatch. It was also, as Paste Magazine put it, a TV abomination. History Channel styled the show as a real documentary, despite the fact that the program was pure fiction. But not everyone recognized it as fake, leaving some viewers furious about pseudoscience being presented as fact, and others excited to discover proof of a real Bigfoot. At this point, I think Bigfoot's going to become uh, a lot closer to reality. Not only did the channel fool their audience, they also more or less lied to their guest experts about the nature of the production. Professor Jeff Meldrum said, via the Idaho State Journal, that he was disappointed that the documentary faked evidence and had no interest in working from credible information. His suggestion for viewers? Take what you can from it and have a chuckle over the remainder. According to Variety, the show Hunting Hitler upset plenty of people by trivializing Hitler and giving credence to conspiracy theories about his escape to Argentina. If this were really a picture of Hitler, it would change history. But even more upsetting is the fact that the History Channel promised anonymity to one of their key sources, and then clearly broadcast his entire face to more than 180 countries. The team arrives at a private home where the informant, along with his translator Philippe, has arranged to meet them under the condition that his identity be protected. According to New York Daily News reports, the grandson of a Nazi war criminal agreed to appear on the program with the understanding that his face would not be shown. Production did blur his face out, except for one shot where it is clearly visible. An obvious disaster for someone who doesn't want to broadcast that his grandfather was a Nazi. Remember when the History Channel solved the mystery of Amelia Earhart only to have their key piece of evidence immediately debunked by a blogger? When you hear the name Amelia Earhart, it's a question mark that's never been solved. 
According to Vanity Fair, the documentary Amelia Earhart, The Lost Evidence caused some short-lived excitement when it presented a photo of Earhart and her navigator alive and in the Marshall Islands after her mysterious disappearance. The documentary suggests that Earhart survived her infamous crash in 1937 and that the U.S. government knew she was alive but covered it up. The network enjoyed a brief moment of historical triumph before they were thwarted by a blogger doing minimal research. National Geographic reported that Japanese military blogger Kota Yamano looked up the alleged location of the photo in the Japanese National Library's database and found that the pic was published in a Japanese coffee table book in 1935, two years before Earhart took her flight. So even if it were Amelia Earhart in that photo, which it's not, it proves nothing about her disappearance. American Pickers follows a couple of guys while they travel around the country and sift through piles of other people's junk in the hopes of finding treasure. The show's producers have occasionally been accused of planting the good stuff. While we can't know that for sure, at least one of the two stars has definitely been caught doing some less than upstanding stuff. This is a perfect situation for a pick. According to a local TV station, Frank Fritz recently pled guilty to charges of operating while intoxicated, which also included driving the wrong way on the interstate. According to the police report, Fritz was, quote, weaving about the roadway under the influence of Xanax and alcohol. The miniseries The Bible was a huge hit for the network in 2014, except for that one slip-up where the producers cast an actor who looked a whole lot like President Barack Obama to play the devil. As described in The Guardian, the comparison went viral almost immediately after the 10-hour miniseries first premiered. You couldn't throw a stone emoji without hitting several hundred posts of Obama's face next to Moroccan actor Mohammed Ozani. Producer Roma Downey claimed that the resemblance was a total coincidence, but the damage was already done. If you will bow down and worship me, I will give you the whole world. Time reported that when the Bible producers cut down their series for the feature-length film version, Son of God, they decided to nix Satan entirely, hoping audiences would focus their attention on Jesus instead. The reality competition alone tries to one-up Survivor by abandoning its contestants in the middle of nowhere and then following their journey to survive alone in the wilderness. Happily, none of these people are naked, because another truly awful show already did that. Board. The really stupid thing about all of this is no matter how alone the series makes it look like these people are, of course they're not really alone. What about all the camera people, who are literally everywhere, right? One thing that's very interesting about how the show was shot is that it, it's all self-documented. We may never know the truth on that, but according to eCelebrity, contestants are not being forced to survive miles from civilization, which is what the showrunners want you to believe. Instead, in many cases, the contestants are actually within an hour's walk of the nearest town, and sometimes they're in a place where there is a network of trails, which definitely seems to suggest that they're just not really that isolated. History's Mountain Men features people pretending like they are living in the 17th century, except for when they watch TV while no one is looking. To me, there's way too much overdevelopment in this world, and I, I want to do at least my part in keeping some of it wild. One of the stars of the show is Eustace Conway, and his deal is teaching people how to be self-sufficient and also how to be super pretentious about their self-sufficiency. His bio reads, Like Thoreau, Eustace has gone to the woods to live deliberately, fronting only the essential facts of life to see if he could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when he came to die, discover that he had not lived. Yeah, he's that kind of guy. But when he's not being pretentious on mountain men, he's being pretentious on his 1,000-acre wildlife preserve in North Carolina, where he teaches people how to live in the wilderness for a mere $700 a week, or $65 an hour if you'd rather just spend an afternoon riding around in a horse-drawn carriage. According to the Wall Street Journal, the preserve was recently raided by health, construction, and fire officials who deemed many of Conway's buildings, quote, not fit for public use. When you think of lumberjacks, you usually think of burly dudes in plaid, chopping down trees, putting wipe your butt on a spotted owl stickers on their trucks, and maybe pressing wildflowers like in that Monty Python song. You don't typically think of them pulling stuff out of the water, because that's not where trees usually are. According to NPR, though, there was a time when lumberjacks used to put felled trees on rafts and float them down the river. 
Every now and then the trees would fall off the raft and sink to the bottom, and they don't rot down there either. If the water is cold, the trees will stay preserved at the bottom for a long time and can eventually be salvaged. The problem is, salvaging sunken trees is not legal in the state of Washington. But that didn't stop the late Axeman star Jimmy Smith from fishing those logs out of the river on national television, which was either ridiculously arrogant or ridiculously stupid. I'm the first one in the Northwest to do this type of logging. Smith had an entirely altruistic reason for his actions, though, to protect people participating in water sports on the river. He said, If I can save one kid or one boater, I think it's worth it. And we're sure that the money you got for those logs didn't factor into it at all. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.